Hello and welcome to Atlantic Conversations. I'm Fanula Sweeney. The Atlantic Fellowship Programme works with a diverse community of leaders around the world with a common commitment to fairer, healthier, more inclusive societies. Through its seven programmes focused on equity and healthcare, socio-economic equity and racial equity, the Atlantic Fellowships offer committed leaders from around the world an opportunity to gain new perspectives and new colleagues while strengthening their confidence in their work for change. In each podcast, I'll be speaking to an Atlantic Fellow about their work and ambitions for a more just world. For this series, I travel to Bangkok to meet up with some of the first Atlantic Fellows from the Equity in Brain Health and Health Equity Southeast Asia programmes. Today, I'm joined by Tarani Loganadan, an Atlantic Fellow for Health Equity in Southeast Asia. Tarani is a public health physician and medical lecturer at the University of Malaya, Malaysia. I asked her what attracted her to the world of public health. I'm a medical doctor by training and I have worked in hospital and at clinic. I found that people were sick, you help them, then they go out into the world and then they get sick again. So it was not solving their problems. I realised that public health was broader and the impact was bigger. You'd improve lifestyles of a lot of people at one go. Paint a picture for us of Malaysia. Malaysia is in Southeast Asia. We are north of Singapore and south of Thailand. We have two great land masses, which is Peninsular Malaysia and Sabah and Sarawak and the island of Borneo. We have shared land borders with Indonesia and Brunei. And we are strategically located in the trade route from China and India. Our country is multicultural, multi-ethnic and multi-religious. The majority of Malaysians are Malay, about 50%. There are about 27% Chinese, about 7% Indian and the rest are classified as other or indigenous people. What, generally speaking then, does the healthcare system look like for someone in Malaysia? We are lucky in Malaysia because we have universal healthcare coverage. That was achieved through our public healthcare system. 80% of it is through the Ministry of Health. The services were started with a rural health focus. So we have clinics at every village or close to a village. And then we have district health services, district hospitals, secondary hospitals, tertiary hospitals. The public health services assure free or highly subsidized services to citizens. Non-citizens are welcome to our clinics, but they need to produce documents, so valid passports and work permits and so on. There's also a barrier of finance in the sense that the pricing for citizens and non-citizens are different. So a citizen might pay very little, but the prices for foreigners can be up to 90 times the price. They reflect the full cost to the service without the subsidy that we give to Malaysians. You felt that despite the universal healthcare system in Malaysia, people were being treated and then going out and getting sick again. Is that not the norm with most of us? The reason people get sick again may not be due to the healthcare system. It is also determined by economic status, the conditions where you live in, whether you have a job, how is your job for you, your education. So you might provide a service that has equal access or is free, but that is not enough to maintain health. So the social determinants are what interest you. Mm -hmm. What does your work then entail? My last position before I left the Ministry of Health was looking after the services of primary health care in the state of Selangor. Currently, I am a lecturer in the University of Malaya. I teach health policy and management to medical students, uh, masters in public health students and doctorate in public health students. I like to think that I bring a more societal and experiential perspective to the subjects that I teach. In Malaysia, the healthcare system is mixed public-private healthcare system. We actually have a very robust private healthcare system. It accounts for about 50% of the total health financing. Unlike the public healthcare system, it is market-driven. For that reason, most of it is located in big towns and cities, groups of GP clinics, managed care, and big hospitals. So what challenges are there to the healthcare system? Every citizen in Malaysia has access to public healthcare from cradle to grave, very much like the NHS. 
the issue is because the healthcare system is a mixed public-private healthcare system, the public system is actually underfunded. Only 4.5% of our GDP goes to healthcare. We need to finance our healthcare system better. Our public healthcare system is financed through general government revenue, taxation and whatever else. Private healthcare is out-of-pocket payments. People pay for services at the point of contact. And if you're that person who's born without much access to education or the prospect of a good, pensionable job... If I was poor, I would go to public clinics. But the public healthcare is overcrowded because a lot of demand... It's underfunded, so you may not have the full range of medication that we would like to offer. Maybe it's understaffed because the public system loses healthcare staff to the private system. If I was a middle-income person, I might go to private healthcare as in a GP in my clinic, in my town. It's very fast. I pay for services, but it's a lot for me if I'm poor. So what is it you're trying to do in your work? Currently, I am looking at exposing some of the inequities in healthcare access. So migrant workers in Malaysia and their access to healthcare. What is the situation for migrant workers and how many are there in Malaysia roughly? Malaysia is an upper middle income country and we import labour from our neighbouring countries. Something like 15 countries send their workers to Malaysia. Officially, the number of documented migrants are about 2 million the numbers of undocumented migrants are more contentious because obviously there's no documents of them in the immigration. Uh, estimations are up to 3 million, so a total of 5 million. And our population is only about 30 million. So that's about one-sixth of our population or 25 to 35% of our labour workforce. So it's a fairly substantial number. The undocumented have a harder time because they do not have access to public health care. Anyone who goes to a clinic needs to show documentation. So if I was a citizen, I'll show my identification card. If I was a non-citizen, I would need to show my passport. So if you're undocumented, you do not have a document. Also, in Ministry of Health facilities, the staff need to report people who come in without the proper documentation to the immigrations. Do they yes. do that? Yes. So these workers are deported, presumably? Or they are taken to a detention centre for deportation. So people do not want to come to seek health care because they are afraid. People would only seek health care if they are really sick. And what is the political mood or the public mood towards health care for undocumented workers? It depends who you talk to. If you talk to people in government, they say that people without documents should not be in the country. They should not be part of the system. If you talk to activists and other people, a lot of people think about human rights. And so how do you close that circle between those two points of view in terms of what it is you're trying to do? I feel that academia has a role too. Activists and people on the ground use a lot of emotional arguments. And emotional arguments have only a certain currency. What academia needs to do is show evidence. And where is that evidence leading at the moment? So far, it shows that there are some human rights violations. We do have provisions for healthcare for documented migrants, but it's not enough. Documented migrants pay into an insurance coverage, which is inadequate to cover healthcare costs. They are given a coverage that is 10,000 ringgit, and it's only for hospitalization and surgical treatment. It does not cover outpatient treatment. What we have done is put out all the issues in a paper to see what are the barriers and what can we do about it. Some of them are health system barriers. For instance, the requirement for documentation, medical fees at our institution. The other things is lack of culturally appropriate services. We do not consider the 15 different nationalities in our country. We do not have interpreters. Those issues we can maybe address within the health system. But there are certain other issues that involve labour, migration, police. Those are multi-sectoral and a bit more tricky. And how confident are you that the research will change things? I hope this is a starting point. It's bringing out some difficult things and people can ask some difficult questions. Being part of the Atlantic Fellows for Health Equity Southeast Asia, what role has that played in your work or your thoughts about how you view the healthcare system in Malaysia? 
Before this, the sort of work I've done is actually different. It's more into health economics and financing. I would look at the system as a whole and look for solutions that is universal and provide equity and benefits for most of the population. Inspired by the Equity Initiative Southeast Asia Fellowship, we were given the task of working together between countries and coming up with projects. So I've stepped out of my comfort zone to work on policies that help and protect and also not protect migrant workers in our countries, namely China, Myanmar and Malaysia. Myanmar being a large sending country, China and Malaysia a recipient. In China, their migrants might cross the border on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of them are not actually migrant workers, they are migrant wives. How hopeful are you that you can affect change in those countries? We are hopeful. We are not sure because this is a very political project. So it is a bit of a dicey game. But one that you're prepared to play. That's right. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And that was Tarani Logan Arden, Atlantic Fellow for Health Equity in Southeast Asia. For more information, you can visit www.atlanticfellows.org. I'm Fanula Sweeney, and you've been listening to the Atlantic Conversations podcast.